All right, here we go. So this is the LED slider control code. And you'll note, I'm just gonna reboot it real quick. It boots fast, but basically it prints that little screen. Now the dots are, it's looking for the IP, it found it. And then it's now running that web server. So I'm gonna browse to it here and I hit go. And the web server comes back, just ESP web server, but note when I do this slider, Oh, if I can slide it and not the whole screen. See that little red LED here coming on? And it shows the value. Let's go full blast. So I don't know if you can tell, but it's getting brighter and dimmer. There's not a lot of range. When it comes to the LED, it doesn't really have a lot of brightness, this one. But it's built right into the board on pin 13. And I thought, you know, it might be neat is right next to it, it's a little hard to see, but there's a little thing called NEO, you might see it, and it's a little tri-pixel, and that is called a NeoPixel, and it's got red, green, and blue. So I thought, you know, what might be cool is what if we could control that in each color individually? Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, I'm gonna load the other code and get right back to you. Okay, here's the new code the NeoPixel controller. There's the IP address, and I put some different color lines around the outside just to distinguish it. And now if we browse to that IP address, let's hit go. Okay, here we go. So we've browsed to the, the address, and it's uh, now it's NeoPixel RGB. And note, remember the pixels next to that red LED. It's a separate one. Oh, so hard to move this slider. There we go. So there's the red that you remember. And full blast. And one thing, the numbers aren't auto updating. So I found if I refresh the browser, it refreshes. See, now it says 255. I don't know what that is. I'll take a look at that. But and then here's green, for example. See the green pixel? Turn that back off. Here's a uh, the blue one. There's a little bit of blue. Now we're gonna go full blast blue. But one thing that I think is really neat is like, let's say we go, let's go back to like full blast blue you can actually turn on more than one at a time now. So there we go, so now it's kind of like a purplish color, and then if we add a little green, all right, let's say we turn off the red, and just go green and blue. So you can kind of make like um, like those LED strip type of things, and this code would actually work very well in, uh, you know, I'm using the integrated uh, NeoPixel, but you could easily say use pin, one of these pins that's available, and um, you could hook up an LED strip. Uh, this may not be the most cost-effective way, but if you got a really cheap ESP32 that doesn't have the screen and you got one of those strips, you could make it and control it with this code. You know, I don't know if it's cheaper, and I don't know if that's even the point sometimes. Sometimes it's just fun to build something that works, you know, just for fun. So, yeah, so this is, this is, a, this is cool, right? Yeah, let's refresh and see what the values are. Okay, there we go. 255.7.109. Um, yeah, so... Okay, why don't I show you some of the code? What kind of got me started with all this is I bought some new light bulbs, these Wiz light bulbs that you see. Um, and they're really cool. They have an app and you can go in and change the color and you can set scenes and you can auto turn them on and off. And I was like, that's really cool. And that's what kind of got me thinking, well, the ESP32 I have has an LED built in and it has a NeoPixel built in. Well. That's, you know, a similar idea to controlling the colors. Uh, so, so that's kind of where I kind of got started. I was like, I kind of want to build something like that. And at this point, um, you know, with the code working, one could hook up a uh, LED strip to one of the GPIO pins and control it or, you know, something kind of like that. So, but one other thing I was thinking about is like, how secure are these light bulbs? And so, um, I, uh, run, I'm just running a command here. I just want to get some of these parameters and I'm um, hitting port 38899 uh, on, this is the IP address of the, uh, of the light bulb. And I just want to see what comes back with, right? So I scan it and, oh, nothing. Oh, there we go, okay. I don't know why it didn't work the first time, but so method, NVO Pro, so, oh, I get the MAC address out of there. RSSI minus 65, I forget what that means. Um, scene ID, so it's running probably, that's either first scene or no scene. Um, and then here's the values, the RGB values. So 235, 135, and zero. 
C0, W140. Hmm. Um, and then dimming 100. I'm forgetting what the C and W might mean. Maybe it's, I don't know. I don't know, but interesting information. Um, I think I might come back to this later and see if there's a way to, I don't know, poke a little deeper into those. But that was just kind of a little taste, a little tester. So let's jump into some of this code. So here's the LED code. Um, uh, yeah, I start off at the beginning here. Uh, Rui Santos, I started with his project and there's a link here. And basically I adapted it so that it'll work with my Adafruit ESP32 S2 Feather TFT. You can easily change a lot of this code to make it work with yours. Um, on my board, I had to add you know, some libraries to talk to my screen. And um, I had to add a definition for the TFT you know, so that it would work. Um, some people may have to define what the pins are for the TFT CS if you have an external screen. Mine is built into the board. It's connected directly, so I don't have to define those pins. Um, I did have to define the pin though for the LED, which is 13 on the GPIO, even though it's built in, which was interesting. And when I get to the code where I use the NeoPixel, that I was trying to do defining a pin. That held me up for a day or two until finally I realized I don't need to define the pin. I could do it a slightly different way and boom, everything started working. So <laughs> classic, you know, things don't work until they work and it can be a little frustrating, but that's part of the process, right? It's broken until it's fixed. So um, here we start off with this, uh, we set a variable of string slider value equals zero. So it's off when you first start. Um, this is frequency, the channel, resolution. Uh, I probably am gonna start picking up speed through this just to make it go a little faster. Uh, param input uh, value is important. Uh, here we're turning, we're sort of um, setting up the web server. And here's a, a web document. A little note, you cannot put comments in the head of this document uh, because it's all being translated differently. It is So if you put comments in, it will just print it on the screen. So no comments, sorry. That's just the way it works. Um, this prog, uh, progmem uh, equals the R and then the raw literal. Uh, a little reminder, you have to encapsulate that. Notice here's the end bracket raw literal quote. That one took me a while to realize I hadn't done correctly. <laughs> and then of course, you know, head, begin, head, where's end head, begin, uh, you know, body, end body. So it's, it's standard HTML with um, other things kind of tossed in here. Uh, just jumping back, here's some of the slider information and kind of the dimensions of it and how you want it to look, background colors. Um, and then here's what actually kind of prints the ESP web server and the name, you know, I just kept it the same at this point and the, the minimum maximum values. Um, this the slider works in the LED. You may have noticed or will notice it, the slider isn't work. It works in the slider, but the numbers aren't auto updating on the RGB. I haven't even looked into it. I was just thankful I got it working, and I just kind of like I'm done. <laughs> you know, I'll probably revisit that at some point. But it works, and if you refresh the page, it will auto update what that value is. So if you want to fix it and let me know, that'd be sweet. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> some placeholders. So there's some good comments in here. A lot of this is um, uh, Rui, uh, sorry, I want to say his name correctly, Rui Santos's code. Um, here's where I made some other changes. Uh, just to turn on my screen, you have to initiate the, um, the screen. I'm realizing I don't probably need these lines. It's not, my, my uh, screen is built in on this particular ESP32, so you don't really need to turn on that I2C power, I don't think. I believe that is for if you're running an external screen and you want to enable the port to be powered on high. Um, if you don't select high, it probably will not light up. So just a little note. Uh, the dimensions of my screen, and that's Y and X. My comment I just realized is written in X times Y. I don't know why. <laughs> well, maybe we'll fix that or just, just know I did it backwards there. But this is correct over here. Uh, the rotation, so I like it flipped a certain way. You have to set the screen to black. Um, okay, and then here's where we start configuring the LED. Uh, these dimensions, um, I put them in for drawing the rectangle. Um, you could just, instead of putting X, you could put one in here instead of Y, but I, I kind of just wanted to show like setting a, a variable, an integer variable, and then calling it later. Very handy, high radius. Notice how it's the same, and then the color I didn't make one for. I just put it in the color, but that's kind of a handy thing for later. Um, I'm still a beginner. Maybe you are, maybe you're not. <laughs> but, you know, just kind of trying to 
fiddle with things and have fun, right? So here's the, the start, and I like how I like having it print dots. That way I know it's kind of looking. And so every second as it's trying to get the um, Wi-Fi, it you know uses SSID and password. And as it's trying, when it's not connected, print dots. And then when it's connected, print the Wi-Fi IP address. And it does. So that's cool. Uh, so there's the web page, that's the root, async, etc. 200 is um, you know, you want to send back to the browser, hey, success. Uh, and then here's the slider, it loads the slider, and it's doing get requests to update it. That's kind of how it, you know, it has to, they have to talk to each other. Um, yeah, and so forth and so on. We'll just, we'll just move on to the next code here. Oh, and then at the very bo bottom, bottom, <laughs> the very bottom, server begin. Very important. If you don't have that, it just isn't going to work. Uh, and then the void loop is empty. There was really nothing to kind of keep looping over in this particular project. And now here we are on the um, the NeoPixel slider. This one is considerably more complicated and took me some time. So I added a, a new library for this NeoPixel, Adafruit NeoPixel.h. I believe you could probably use this on other NeoPixel devices. Um, maybe you have, maybe there's something better out there. Choose your own library, but. Um, Again, this one is integrated, which is also a little different. I, I was trying to define, instead of pin underscore NeoPixel, I was doing NeoPixel underscore pin, and I was defining it up here and saying it was, I don't know, 10, 13. I was trying all sorts of different ones, and it just wasn't working. You do ha I did have to define how many NeoPixels I have. So NumPixels is one. Um, we'll skip through. Here's the SSID password. Set the values to zero for these three colors, right? Because a NeoPixel is actually three LEDs a red, a green, and a blue. And with those three colors, you can create many, many colors, right? So that's that's what a NeoPixel kind of is at a basic definition. Um, okay, so here it is, pixel. So this is what really tripped me up for a long time, this pin underscore NeoPixel. I was doing NeoPixel underscore pin. And so this, because it's Adafruit, it's built in, it, it isn't, I don't think it's on a separate controller, but um, it, it isn't something you need to call on a separate pin. And you know how I actually, I was just stuck, stuck, stuck. I used that, was that chat GTP? Uh, and I, I sort of saying, hey, I have this board and it's not turning on. H how is the NeoPixel configured? Is it on its own controller? And I was kind of talking back and forth to this bot and then all of a sudden kind of the light went on. I'm like, wait a minute. It, I forget, it said something like, I forget what it said, but basically I was like, oh, it, it doesn't, it, it, ha it doesn't need a pin. If it's, in, if it's on board, it's part of the board, and that is what got me over the hump. So thank you very much. <laughs> that, you know, and, and I've used that chat uh, GTP a few times, and I like it a lot. I don't love it because you can't really, you know, if you dump your code in, it will, you know, it doesn't really know everything you're doing, and sometimes it spits back partial chunks, but it's great for pointing you in the right direction. I did use it in several places um, in defining this line and getting um, this portion, the kilohertz and everything, I had that wrong. Uh, I also did, you know, Googling, but sometimes it's, you know, you just have kind of a particular question and super useful, so check it out. There's a whole bunch of these out there now. Um, they're usually pretty busy and not working, so, and buyer beware. Um, okay, so moving ahead. Uh, the web server, okay, we'll jump ahead. We already, this is super similar. Here's where it starts getting a little different, a little more interesting. Uh, the NeoPixel, so we're calling NeoPixel and we're saying that, you know, for here we're setting values uh, for the class red, red value. And then green, you'll notice blue. Uh, the functions, um, we're updating the slider PWM and we're passing these values on. This part was surprisingly hard with the element value. I, you know, again, a noob, still learning. I hope you're learning too and I wish you all the best. <laughs> uh, here's a section that's a little unique with the pixel, the NeoPixel. You have this, you know, NeoPixel, be, uh, excuse me, pixels.begin. Then I set the brightness to 50, which is half. These things get bright. Oh my goodness. So that's the max. I could pump it up to 100, but it's just kind of burns your eyes a little bit in a good way, in a good way. And then we clear it and then we do a show. Uh, delay, uh, again, this is just more of my screen stuff. Um, here's where I, I just wanted to make it look a little pretty on the screen, so I'm drawing these round rectangles, and that's um, X and Y coordinates. Oh, here, if we mouse over, it's awesome. One thing I like about this Arduino IDE that I'm using, oh, where was it? Okay, it shows 
like here's the different fields. And right down at the bottom, if I move my mouse, I'm afraid I'll lose it. But if you look at the bottom line, void, draw rect round rectangle, x, you know, int 16 underscore t, x, then y, and if you move to the next section, width, height, radius. So x, y, width, height, and radius, and then color. Pretty cool that you can just kind of, you know, I kind of put them on there and sort of like, yeah, I like the way that looks. Oh, let me move this over a couple pixels. Super easy, super fun. Gives it a little more flavor. Um, okay, here's the usual starting Wi-Fi stuff I like to do. I changed it just a hair to kind of reflect what we're doing. Ah, server on. So now we have a root, you know, again, and then we have a slider, but they're, these are considerably different because uh, we want to deal with the red value it was mentioned above, and then we also are, you know, we're doing a replace and red value, and then down here, we need to, we had to, I had to define a lot of strings, and that, the previous one I think just had input message defined, but I had to do red, green, blue, output, and then color param. That took a, you know, it took a chunk to figure out for me, uh, and then we start saying down, so like, you know, if request, if the amp parameter input, which is commented up above, um, you know, the message, the value, pass the value, set it to that color, and if it's, um, you know, if it's red, uh, you know, the red value from the input message, red, red, then set pixel colors accordingly, right? So, and then, um, and then at the end, say pixel show. That one, again, got me. <laughs> A lot of gotchas in this one. Uh, so, and then you actually have to send the response. That's the other one. You got to send the response. So, it, the code works. Um, please fiddle with it. And thank you again, Rui Santos. You're awesome. Really got me started on this. I don't know where, I wouldn't have known where to start. Uh, and that's, you know, I, I recommend people go out there and find code people have written and take a look, you know, build on what they've built on, you know, stand on the shoulders of giants and all that good stuff and, and enjoy it. And uh, don't be afraid to Google or use that chat bot thing or ask questions or fail because this, this one, this is probably my sixth or seventh version of the code to finally get it to work. Now it may have worked a couple versions ago, like I said, this this thing was just, I don't know, I just hit a roadblock on that. That was just the way it was. But um, I hope you enjoy. Take it easy. Talk to you later.